Okay, we have got a lot to talk about here in session number five. Obviously, you can see that we're kind of playing blackjack over here. Um, it's uh, it's mostly blackjack from the dealer's perspective, though, where uh, one card is dealt down. Um, you can see this one up, and then when you're ready, you just hit show dealer hand, and uh, it will it will play through uh, kind of regular um, house rules where the the dealer won't uh, or he'll stop hitting after he's got. Uh, 17 or, or higher so um it's it's kind of a, a simple game if in you know if you guys really have an interest in um making some sort of blackjack game there's uh there's certainly a lot that you can do to uh to make this a lot better like adding other <laughs> players into the mix here but we've got a lot of code to teach um just with this and you have probably already seen over here that uh, this is uh, some of the, the bullet points of what we're going to be looking at, the an NS dictionary. And um, that was one of those things when I first saw in uh, like many of my training books, I was like, well, I don't really care about making a dictionary, so I'll just pass on through that. Well, what it is is just basically um, it is uh, pairing together uh, a key and a value. So in our case, we've got uh, the name of whatever card it is that's showing, and then that has a value, okay? And um, you can imagine that that has a lot of uses for any sort of uh, card game or even like a board game or say you're drawing cards from a deck. And speaking of which, we'll also be uh, shuffling up those values as well, which um, is also something that's uh, pretty fundamental to a lot of games. And then the NS Notification Center, this is kind of a, a, a neat thing to take a look at because so far in um, all the games that we've done, we've been kind of uh, talking down to our classes, which is how you're supposed to do things. Um, in other words, uh, a subclass of another class isn't going to be sending messages up the chain, okay? And here's an example, too, where we've had a lot of things like this where we have some sort of where these buttons are like on the view controller and it's fine for them to send messages down to uh, the subclasses in this case the blackjack game but the blackjack game never really talks upward you know and says something like uh, I'm done or and it, it never accesses it directly and, and uh, the way that you handle that in uh, objective C is to use this NS notification center where basically you just set up um, kind of a uh, an alert uh, that says well you know if um, if you get this message uh, then you're gonna do something okay and it, it's kind of like uh, you know application wide all right so any any classes could kind of throw out this uh, this this message that uh, the, the main application is listening for and uh, then it will do a particular method so that is uh, that's actually something I had yet to, to really explore before um, prepping for this lesson and uh, it's kind of an exciting one to play around with and then uh, adding objects without uh, interface builder okay so like these cards uh, there's no uh, IB outlet in the uh, the class for the blackjack game so they just kind of appear and uh, disappear which is something else that we'll be looking at which is uh, unloading the uh, the entire view and then loading it back up again it's, uh, it's not a big deal but it's something that we hadn't really done yet and then uh, view with tag this is kind of a cool one and this goes back to adding objects without the uh, interface builder is just being able to kind of dynamically put an image um, or U UI view on stage and then uh, tagging it so that we can reference it later, which I'm sure if you guys are coming from like a flash background, that's a, that's a pretty key thing. You, you know, it's easy to put tons of children on stage, but then you got to kind of keep track of them. So that is uh, what is ahead. And if you're interested, let's go ahead and uh, start learning how to do everything. Okay, so from Xcode, go to View Based Application, or actually go to New Project first. And oh, don't forget to to uh, size it up for iPhone if that's what you want. But you know, oh, that iPad is right around the corner. I ordered mine. So um, and everything that we've uh, learned so far is, uh, of course, applicable to that as well. So keep that in mind. All right, uh, training five, and we'll call this uh, playing cards. Click on save. And uh, by the way, you guys have probably noticed by now too that there's a, a big folder here called uh, playing card art. And uh, let's go ahead and dump all that stuff in there. For some reason, everything opened up off to the side for me. Here we go.
Okay, uh, unfurl resources, and let's go ahead and add new group. And we'll just call this uh, cards. So I'm just going to take everything that's inside of here, dump it on in. Copy items into destinations group folder if needed. Click on add. And I can't believe I've forgotten to talk about this for five entire weeks. But one of the things I finally did include in your artwork is an icon.png. And uh, this just can be any uh, you know, piece of artwork. Uh, 57 by 57 pixels. And when you build it and run it, magically it shall turn into your icon it's even got that little uh swoop of a glare added into it you don't have to do that and uh obviously too it, it rounds out the corners like that uh one of the things that uh, apple's really particular about when it comes time to submitting your game is that um the icon so this 57 by 57 image be the same as uh, another piece of artwork that they request from you which is a 512 by 512 um, image and that's just um, it's like a it's like a preview image that you submit to them on their uh, in the uh, application to uh, turn in your game but if they don't match they'll send you an email that says you know these have to be the same that artwork wise they just have to be the same obviously they're different in size um, and one of the th other things that you can do um, which we haven't uh, yet talked about is put in a default dot um, png file and that has to be uh, at least for an iPhone application it has to be 320 by 480 because the iPhone launches in portrait mode and uh, that can just be any graphic that you want uh, that uh, the user will see when the, um, the phone is loading up. And of course, it doesn't take long for the phone to, or the application to load up uh, usually, but um, hey, better to have that than uh, nothing at all. And uh, something to note too that uh, when it comes on, if you are making a, an application for the iPad, uh, they give you options now for which orientation uh, the uh, the phone the the device might possibly be in and I can't remember the exact names of those but there's something like default and then underscore uh, portrait or uh, portrait upside down or something like that so you can you can uh, obviously Google all that stuff all right so once you've got the uh, artwork inside of here let's go and add ourselves a, another class so new file and we'll make this a um, another uh, UI view controller subclass uh, click off uh, with nib even though we're really not gonna be using it too much this time I'm gonna call this class uh, blackjack or yeah blackjack there we go click on finish and let's do some other kind of uh, early setup type stuff uh, once again I'm gonna make sure that the uh, that we're not seeing the status bar so right click over here to add row and we want status bar is initially hidden click over here check that and then I'm uh, pretty sure we still need to make that change elsewhere although you know what I've yet to actually experiment if that totally gets rid of it uh, yeah it looks like it does okay so maybe we don't have to mess around at all okay click that click that and uh, go ahead and take blackjack uh, the nib file just drag it out of uh, if it did show up here in your classes drag it out of there and put it in not with cards just put it in with uh, with the rest of your resources I'm trying to get it so everything is nice and organized but there we go uh, with the uh, playing cards view controller double click on this let's get uh, interface builder open Take a second. I guess I'd closed it down, and well, just for our own benefit, let's get rid of that status bar. So click over here on View, and make sure the Attributes Inspector is open. Take that down. There we go. Unspecified, and then we also want to go over here and just make sure that the height is 480. And one of the only things I'm really going to do here is actually there's a couple things let's go uh, let's put an image on stage and this will just be the backdrop for our game 
So this will be felt dot png, and then let's also grab over here in our library a toolbar. So I just search for a tool; it should show up. There we go, toolbar. It's already got uh, one item on there. Let's go and add one more. Bar button item, there we go. And you notice this guy will kind of uh, zip over to the far left. You can add in a uh, fixed space bar button item. So I'll just drag this guy out and put it right there. And then I can lengthen this so this guy will be all the way over to that one side. And I've already got some kind of fixed dimensions for these. Uh, one tough thing at times can be selecting things in this bar. So like, um, it's a little easier if you go over here and just unfurl this and grab it that way. Let's see, I'm going for memory. I think I had one, nope, that looks a bit big. I think I had 100 here and then this one was 150. I'm just going to double click that so I can. There we go. All right. Uh, it's about set up. You know what? It's looking a little blue. Let me go back over here to the toolbar and set this to be. There we go. That looks much nicer. You can also make it translucent, too. Oh, look at that. You can see through to the backdrop. Okay. Save things out. And let's jump back over here. Let's go to our view controller and begin away. Uh, remember, we need to write an at class for our blackjack class. And that's so that the header file here, uh, or the, uh, yeah, the header file, uh, is just kind of vaguely aware that uh, that guy exists. And in our implementation file will be. Um, We'll need to import in the header for that blackjack, but at this point, just gotta do at class. And within the interface or at interface, we're gonna write IB outlet UI bar button. I'm sorry, I already messed it up. Bar button and then item. And we'll just call this uh, button one. Let's be kind of vague about it. Do the same thing for button two and at property monatomic the usual uh, let's see ID whoa there we go in fact let's make it easy And let's also go ahead and set up the uh, our other class. So we write blackjack, and then kind of following the, what we're doing before with all of the, the other classes that we uh, loaded in as uh, other views in past sessions. Well, I'm just going to put the and then uh, blackjack in front of it. And there we go. Uh, that does that. Uh, let's go ahead and set up some of the um, IB actions too while we're in here. IB action and this one I'll call play blackjack. And uh, I swear actually this lesson we'll, uh, we'll play around with making use of that ID sender. We never really did before but um, it's not hard, but it's also really not often that necessary. And then uh, the other one will be uh, show dealer hand. So let's go ahead and take both of these guys and we'll jump over to this file. I'm going to go ahead and chop out that and that. We'll unlock that. Let's get rid of this too. I'm going to paste in what I just copied. 
I guess I could have given you guys a start file with all this done. All right, uh, these will be ready to go, and then we've also got to uh, synthesize everything. Like I was saying, we do need to put in here import. And is that it? I think, I think so. Uh, let's just put in here. Something, something that we can test. All right. Everybody got a good look at that. Let's switch it back over here to Interface Builder. And from Files Owner, hold down Control. Let's go down to Bar Button Item. That'll be our first one. Pull down again. This will be our second one. And these little guys, they only have one option over here for. Um, sent actions just the selector so you just drag from right here over here to files owner and there's our IB action play blackjack and then this guy will do the same thing it'll be show dealer hand and oh let's see while it's easy let's just go ahead and uh, put in here something other than item say uh, play blackjack is Jack capitalized? Is it even two words? I don't even know, really. And then this will be um, um, what did I have this as before? A dealer. I don't know. What the? <laughs> I'm trying to think what I did didn't have that written as before. I'm going to launch the uh, my practice version. Show dealer hand. I like that, yeah. Where did I? I lost my place, though. Okay, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and build our copy. And click on play blackjack. Sure enough, play game. Show dealer hand. That is a great sign. Okay those guys out uh, one of the things I'm going to do is when this view initially loads button one or wait button two will be enabled but set to no so it's actually not going to be enabled and that'll keep you from uh, messing around with that guy right away so you can't click on that now but you can of course still click on this and when you play blackjack, we're going to set it so that both button one and button two are initially going to be uh, turned off. Okay. And actually, the same thing would be true for. The show dealer hand. Well, what we'll end up doing is um, sending up uh, using that NS notification class a message to uh, this class, our view controller, that it's going to be okay to uh, basically re-enable these buttons again. Um, and that way, the uh, the dealer can kind of play out his hand because when he plays out, it takes maybe four or five seconds, just depending on how many uh, cards need to be turned over. We'll we'll do some of that. Um, we saw this in some of the previous lessons where we perform a selector after a delay, and that delay is just caused by the uh, you know the the flipping of the actual card. So it could take, like I was saying, you know, it could take two seconds if there's no more cards to add, or it could take five. Um, so depending on which, we just got to wait around, and we don't want people clicking um, other buttons to, you know, 
unload the file or to show the dealer hand again. So we'll just re-enable those buttons when needed. And what else we got to do here? Let's go ahead and actually, when you play blackjack, we will load up that uh, our view and. Yet again, uh, you know what, let's just go ahead and paste this in here to save a little bit of time. I feel like I'm spending too much time on this. All right, so, uh, you know what, actually let me get rid of the, the game part of this. All right, that should work. Okay, so um, again, we're uh, referencing the class name right there, and we're saying, hey, you know what? We want to uh, create a new uh, instance of this class. Uh, we're allocating it, and we're knitting it with a nid name. All right, so again, even though we're not going to really be using much inside of this nib file, um, there are, there are going to be one. There's going to be two objects in there. Uh, we're going to knit with nib name too. And uh, then we go over here and say self, uh, the blackjack. Remember that's uh, this, the blackjack is uh, this instance variable of it. It's going to equal be equal to this and um, self.view, insert subview. And uh, we're just basically popping this guy uh, on stage at index of one. Uh, previously, we were putting these guys at zero, okay? And uh, I'm going to put it at one this time. Uh, so it's actually going to be on top of the view controller. Um, you won't really notice that though. Uh, and then uh, finally we uh, just release out uh, this copy of it. So this doesn't really get used that uh, for very long, but uh, it serves its purpose. And I think we're good to go. Let's, um, well, let's build it and run it. Uh, I can actually tell you that there will be one problem. This should go to white when you click play blackjack. And the reason for that is because we haven't set the uh, the view to transparent. So double click on this. Uh, when this guy pops up, the view here, or actually right here, click on this. We want to set the background to being all the way transparent. And let's go ahead and take that status bar off. So um, there we go. Let's make sure that the height of this is 480 again. Oh, my wife is cooking. <laughs> Can you tell? Fire alarm's going off. Okay, now that the possible flash fires are out, uh, I've got, um, while I've got this open, let's go and hit up the library one more time. Uh, UII, put an image on here. That is way too big. It's going to be 71 by 96, I believe. And this is going to be our top card. So cut back over here. This is going to be back.png. Uh, if you wanted to, you could um, kind of stack these up. You could copy and stack them up a little bit if you want to make a seems like a deck of cards kind of going with the old school computer game card graphics just so long as uh, one of these guys on top of here is a top card and sees through to one uh, kind of an identical one underneath it so that way when we move this up and we're going to animate it up like that uh, it shows through to one that's um, again right underneath it so you kind of get the feeling like you're just always pulling off you know the top few cards and you're not really seeing the deck uh, uh, you know go down visibly so uh, we need to jump over here to our blackjack class and let's go ahead and put this in real quick IB outlet UI image view to our star here top Card. And, oops, proper day, anatomic, routine, and then all the rest of this good stuff right up top here. Paste that on over, and then let's copy this. Synthesize it. 
Okay, back over here in Interface Builder, pull down, and that'll be our top card. And now, I believe that's all we gotta do in uh, Interface Builder for the rest of the lesson, I think. Um, let me uh, build and run this. Make sure everything is uh, seen through correctly. Play blackjack, we should see the cards then. And sure enough, okay, everything is good to go there. So uh, in our uh, implementation file, let's go ahead and get rid of uh, the stuff that we don't need to see commented out. Uh, we do want to do some stuff with muted load, so let's unlock that, get rid of that, and let's just bring that up a little bit. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and set up some initial variables that we'll use throughout all the, uh, or many of the methods in here. One's gonna be a current card, and let's jump actually back over to our header file first. Int current card, and I could go ahead and set up uh, this as a property. Um, it would just be non-atomic. You don't retain it because it's an integer. But um, uh, we don't really need to here. Uh, we're, we're just declaring it uh, so that we can use current card in other methods that occur throughout here. You know, if we just want it to be occurring in this one method, we can just go with that. That would be fine. We don't have to do anything in the header file. Um, but uh, we don't or at least in my setup here, um, I'm not using current card, or not. it's not uh, being accessed by another class, like the view controller never alters it or gets a value from it. Uh, so I don't have to set it up uh, down here in, in, in property or synthesize it. Uh, so just a, you know, just a little reminder of why sometimes you do that and sometimes you don't. Um, so current card, then also let's set up a, a total dealer. Val if I could type value and that'll be zero because as you can guess every time this uh, view loads up the dealer value will be back down to zero yet again and let me just make sure I'm setting up all the right instance names here at least according to what I had before okay and uh, let's uh, now set up an array and this is gonna be card keys and again these will be the ultimately they'll end up being the key in the uh, in the in the dictionary that we set up okay so you can kind of you can kind of think about it like um, and I'm sure this is why they call it a dictionary uh, you have a, a term that you look up and then it gives you you know what that means okay so fish equals something that swims in the ocean in our case though our our um, key are going to be the the car names and our values are just going to be uh, numbers but those values could be um, many different things I, I really I'm pretty sure it could be any uh, NS object so it could be um, it could be giving you back uh, uh, UI image names or something all right uh, but let's go ahead and uh, fire away at this card keys and this is going to equal NS array allocate it and init with objects which we're going to paste down here and um, I do need to actually go step back to the header file and uh, uh, set this up as well, but let's go ahead and paste in everything that is going to occur below here And I'm going to copy this in myself and I suggest you do the same because look at this it is a lot of text and I've kind of separated these by um, Not kind of I have separated these uh, by their uh, By their card values. So all the aces the twos threes all that stuff is together and uh, it doesn't hurt to have a separate line in here too, just to make it a little bit easier to read and make sure they didn't uh, leave anybody off. Uh, I've uh, begun with the uh, the aces here, and uh, you can see that I wrote uh, club ace instead of just putting one, even though I gave you guys a card called club one and I've given you guys a card called club ace. Um, I just threw in both because it's not that much extra data and. Um, you know, possibly when you're doing your own card projects, you might want to um, call these Club One, and that would come in maybe if you were uh, 
putting together a string and initializing it with a format that that um, had club and then used a variable for one, two, three, and so on. And um, in which case it would be much easier to go with uh, the number one instead of uh, ace. But um, well, kind of the reason we're using we're going to be creating this dictionary is to avoid situations like that anyway. But just throwing it out there. Uh, anyway, let's back up just one a second and go back over here to our header file. So this is going to be ns array uh, card keys, and we'll set this up as a property as well. Even though when I think about it, I, you know what, we might not have even needed to do that because again, this is a case where. Uh, these card keys are not being accessed by uh, another class, but you know I've kind of gotten used to just doing this, the, the property thing. Um, and you know, come to think of it now, it, it has uses beyond just uh, you know uh, giving it access or giving other classes access to it. Um, so yeah, definitely do that. Uh, and another thing too that uh, which I kind of uh, had trouble uh, with. When I was testing this, I hadn't uh, I hadn't allocated this. What I'd done was I had written it like card keys equals ns array array with objects, which was working uh, totally fine. But when I was trying to be a good memory citizen and releasing uh, card keys down here in the uh, dialic method. Basically, I was doing this, and it was crashing every time um, because I was releasing an object that had never been allocated to begin with. So, a little uh, last-minute uh, fix on my part. <laughs> I only realized this a couple hours ago that that was the problem. And another thing, if we're going to be getting into this, uh, into memory, this uh, lesson, let's also put in here. Uh, card keys equals nil. So just basically, <laughs> it equals nothing, and um, <clears throat> then it will uh, it will get uh, released in the end. And um, you know what? I'm I'm still kind of figuring out a lot of this uh, the memory stuff on my own. And um, we'll uh, again we'll, <clears throat> we'll try to uh, try to make it uh, good this lesson because we are going to be unloading this blackjack class so you know these should fire off uh, when we uh, unload things all right so continuing on we've uh, we've now got our card keys set up let's go ahead and uh, set up the uh, the card data and or the card values I'm sorry um, and then we'll put them both together into the dictionary but um, we set them up as um, separate arrays or at least in this case we're going to set them up as separate arrays first and uh, this is going to be card values let's um let's kind of do this in order this time let's go back to our header file and um, this one I'm going to make an ns mutable array and the reason for that change is so that I can uh, Use this uh, for loop in just a second to kind of set up or add objects to the array instead of just initializing with those objects. So uh, again, card keys, card values, and here we go. Card values is going to equal ns mutable array allocate it. So we'll end up. Er releasing it later on and then I'm just gonna initialize it but uh, it's basically being initialized with nothing and then we'll come down here and we're gonna write a handy dandy little loop to uh, add objects I'm gonna start by writing int b equals one you'll see where that comes in in just a second all right and then four this will look a little bit more familiar for int a equals one do your semicolon and as long as a is less than or equal to 13 we're gonna keep spinning through this for loop and then write a plus plus that will add one to a for every iteration of this loop 
I could have also written a equals a plus one. That would have been fine too. And now inside of here, uh, we're going to do card values, add object, and we're going to be adding ns number, number with int, and that int value is going to be b. And the reason we're not just putting a inside of here, okay, is because at, at different times during this loop, uh, we're going to make b <clears throat> equal something different than a. And we're also going to run this four times. So just paste that in there four times like so because, uh, well, we have four of each one of these types of cards. Uh, so if we were just to do this right now, um, well, actually, b doesn't equal a yet. If we were to run this right now, then uh, we would have one for this, two for this, and so on, down to uh, Jack, where that's going to start to equal 11, 12, 13. But uh, as you guys know, in a game of blackjack, uh, jacks don't equal 11, queens don't equal 12, uh, well, they equal 10. And um, so we've got to make that little change there as well. But hopefully, um, you guys can look at this and see, oh, all right, that's the kind of the simple version of it. And this would actually be um, what you would want to use if you had a card game um, where, you know, kings did equal 13, queens did equal 12. And of course, there are plenty of card games uh, like that. And let's see, what else did I want to mention here? That might actually be it. All right, so um, let's go ahead and make this a uh, little change. And we're going to say, actually, let's just get rid of this for right now. Inside of this loop, we're going to write if a is less than 10. Then b does equal a. Else. b equals 10. Okay, so that would um, that would work for everybody uh, but the aces. And actually, it, originally when I was uh, playing around with this, I did have um, aces equal one, and then I did the math um, later on for adding 10 to that to make them 11. Uh, but I found it was actually a little bit easier to just go and say if a equals one, okay, so which would be true the first time this for loop runs around, uh, then we'll just make b equal 11. <clears throat> so, does that make sense? Um, again, first time this runs around, this is going to equal 11, so that means the first four values in here are going to be 11, and then 1 through 9, or 1 through 10 are pretty easy. Actually, the, the rest are just 10 after, you know, the 10th one. Okay, so... Um, Oh, the one thing I did want to mention too, though, is that we, when we're uh, adding objects to uh, an NS mutable array, it, it does want these to be this um, NS or this object type. Okay, so that's why we, we have to use NS number and then number with, you know, just plain old integer. Okay. All right. Um, now we can start to. Uh, add everything into a dictionary and we should first step back over here to our header file so we're going to write ns dictionary we'll just call this dictionary by the way there are uh, ns mutable dictionary types as well so don't get confused if you find that you can't add to an ns dictionary but um Again, in this case, we're just going to initialize this guy with those values and those keys. So once you've done that, step back over here, synthesize it. Uh, let's go ahead and do this on a different line. Synthesize dictionary. And coming back down here, now we can write dictionary equals ns dictionary we're going to allocate it so let's not forget to release it later on and then init 
with objects. Don't let it fill in that objects and keys. Just go ahead and put um, semicolon there. And our ar objects are those uh, card keys. Oh, I'm sorry. Our objects are the card values. And four keys. And that's card keys. Okay, so how can we check this? <laughs> Let's go ahead and just... Uh, well, there's a couple ways we could do this. The easiest one is going to be NS log, and then set this up like usual. This is going to be an object, so we just write percentage sign, and then that at symbol, and uh, do your comma, and then just put in dictionary, and let's see what it does. All right, build and run. Okay play blackjack and here we go what did we get it kind of put it in its own little order that it came up with here well I guess actually this makes sense it uh, is it alphabetical yeah it is so uh, club 10 equals 10 yeah that's right I uh, just go on down here and you can see that uh, let's see club jack queen yep all right and so on for the rest of them uh, another way you could cycle through this, and I'll just paste this in real quick, is so you could also go with for ID key in dictionary, and then uh, you kind of do your own little formatting here, key, this, value, and so on. And let's see it. So this actually kind of um, puts it in a much more random order. So uh, I guess that's why I had that commented out, didn't I? Let me just go ahead and, uh, well, uh, I should probably leave it in there for you. Okay, um, let's uh, let's not forget about uh, releasing things. So we allocated the dictionary and the card values. So let's jump down here and card values, dictionary. The um, the card values we could release uh, right here if we wanted to. Because um, at least you know, I kind of know the future here. We don't use them um, beyond that. The the card keys, though, um, I am going to be using to create another um, array with, and that's going to be the one where we kind of shuffle the deck. And then the dictionary we use throughout. Um, so we need to hold on to that. But um, you know, what? I have absolutely no problem with just keeping card values around for a while and then releasing it here at the end. And um, one of the reasons for that is because yet another problem I had um, with this dialic statement was that, or method, was it was it was crashing me because I kind of forgot that I had released card values, you know, over here. And um, if you do that, or if, or if you try to release something twice like that, you're going to get a crash. And... Um, like I was saying again, you know, I spent quite a few hours dealing with why I was, why releasing things and trying to be good, you know, kept crashing the program. Whereas if I was just sloppy about it, I had no problem. So anyway, uh, we can also set these to nil when the view unloads. So let's go ahead and do that. And yeah, let's go about creating this uh, or shuffling the deck. And we'll create a new method called void shuffle deck. We can call it right after this self shuffle deck. And you know what? Uh, just looking at this now, I'm not sure which is more appropriate to do to call the method uh, before or after this super view did load statement. Uh, I don't think it really matters, but uh, we'll just do it right before. And uh, let's go declare this guy back in our header file. Okay, shuffle deck. 
scoot back over here and actually you know what I should come back over here too I do need to create a uh, a new array I'm gonna make this uh, another NS mutable array let's call this uh, cards shuffled and sorry I'm just thinking about this style I you don't, don't really have to create a, an entirely new array for uh, for doing this uh, I, it's I'm doing something kind of similar to another project that I'm working on right now where it made a little bit more sense in that one uh, to, to copy the original um, data and then shuffle it up and um, I, you know I don't think we're creating that much more overhead by doing this um, but um, just know that you know it's kind of questionable in this particular case whether or not we should but um, you know this is a pretty simple application anyway so I think we can it's, it's safe to add a few more things to it like just another array you know that's not a big deal uh, so anyway card shuffled is um, again it's a mutable array so we're gonna say card shuffled equals NS mutable array we're going to allocate this so again that's something that we will release later and we are going to init it with and you can always hit escape to see what all your options are over here Init with array all right so then all it's asking for here is that we put in another array and that'll be our card keys okay and you know what let's just go ahead and um, kind of verify that uh, everything is working up till that point so let's just write our cards shuffled uh, again this is an object right here I mean this is an object so we put in the percentage and then the at symbol and do, 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 do. let's see play blackjack okay so we uh, all right remember this is the, di the dictionary that it was uh, sending back out to us and then here is uh, cards shuffled and looking good so far so uh, let's just go ahead and comment that out for right now probably come back to that once we actually uh, shuffle them up and inside of this method let's make a, uh, a little integer called a and this will equal cards shuffled and the amount of cards in there so that um, or the amount of data in there so that should be uh, 52 for our 52 card deck and then we're going to use that uh, integer in this statement for and then this will be int b equals zero semicolon as long as b is less than a and when I'm looking at it now I could have just pop that in there I guess yeah I could have <laughs> that's okay uh, B plus plus and now let's come in here and uh, shuffle up our cards this um, this took me all of about <laughs> 15 minutes or so to figure out I thought it was gonna be a pain to do when it in a, on that separate project that I was working on to figure out how to um, shuffle a deck but it's uh, it's really not that tough um, what we're gonna do is uh, kinda create a random object so we'll we'll grab out um, you know something from anywhere in the deck and then replace it uh, w with another um, somewhere else and then take what got replaced and put that uh, where the original item was or where the ra random item was so if that doesn't make sense yet well it will hopefully in just a second uh, this will be int random object equals and what I'm doing here is, is uh, j just getting an in a random index number so you know that's gonna be from 0 to um, 51 I guess yeah because even though we got 52 um, objects in our th in our uh, deck we're, we're um, sampling from 0 to 51 and uh, we're gonna write arc random this will be a random number of whatever we do after this percentage sign here so again this is uh, cards shuffled count or I could have gone with a again <laughs> to make further use of that uh, variable I'm not really using and then NS 
string. We'll call this string swap object. This is going to equal, actually, right now we're just going to initialize it. Okay, now we're going to make it equal something. Swap object equals cards shuffled object at index. And this will be B. Okay. Right, right. Um, the, the, so this is the object to swap out. So basically, if, if every time we... we we loop through here, we're just going to grab uh, whatever is at B, all right? So the first time around, it's the first object in our array. Second time around, it'll be the second one. And that's the one that constantly gets swapped out. So um, you could, in some sense, sort of think about this like we're shuffling it 52 times. Uh, okay, all right. Here's where the real magic lies. Card shuffled, uh, and then we're going to write replace object at index B, okay, so that's the swap object with this object over here, which is going to make use of that random object. And again, we put in cards shuffled, object at index, and that object is random object. So close off that, and then of course we got to close off this first bracket right there, and hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, it, it, you think you can. Well, let me close that off. If it doesn't make sense, you could maybe view this like this. Okay, and would that make a little bit more sense? Replace object at B. Okay, whatever that is with the object at one, but in our case we are picking out that random object. Okay, so now the next thing that we need to do is make sure that we uh, take, or we, or we uh, <laughs> grab this object, all right, so whatever this guy is, and swap it out with this. Otherwise, we would end up having uh, lots of repeated objects in there, which you could, you know, you could run that, you could publish this right now and test that out, but uh, let's not do that. Okay, so replace object at index random object with object, and then here's our swap object. And we don't need that guy anymore, at least for this iteration. Of course, when this runs again, it will uh, create that swap object one more time, and um, It'll also create or replace um, this random object. So hopefully that uh, that makes sense. And uh, let's see what happens now if we run this log statement after the for statement. So remember, this is going to run through and uh, do its whole thing. It's going to do it 52 times. All right. So every one of those objects will get replaced or swapped out, I should say. So play blackjack, and uh, let's see what happened. So spade six, heart four, spade two, heart queen. Let's uh, let's go ahead and re restart it. And sure enough, got a different, uh, different group this time around. Uh, yeah, I guess the real thing to do would be to go and uh, make sure there's no repeating objects in here. And probably the best way to do that is to just eyeball it, go through. Do I see heart two twice? Uh, hopefully you don't. Otherwise, I've made a, a big mistake in how I'm swapping out objects or shuffling a deck. But um, trust me, I've done that work for you, and I think I've got it in there correctly. Okay, uh, now we need to actually go ahead and... Uh, Take care of our memory management for this. So we'll set that to nil. And let's also release that. Okay. Okay, so let's deal out some cards now. We've uh, shuffled them. That's obviously the next step. Uh, I'm going to go and inside of here, let's write self deal cards. It's a great method name. <laughs> 
for exactly what we're doing. And I, um, I just rewrote this uh, method no less than like 15 minutes ago because when I was looking at it to obviously to teach it, I thought, wait a minute, this isn't this isn't uh, perfect. I'd um, you know kind of in the sequence of uh, developing this lesson or any project, um, you know, by the, the by the time you get to the end of it, uh, you've done and learned things that. Uh, are a little bit better than the the way you started things off, and that and that was a perfect case of um, uh, that. So we are gonna kind of wing it a little bit, and uh, let's uh, let's go about that. Um, you guys might have noticed actually when I tested this uh, lesson or, or demoed it right at the very beginning, the uh, the card the the initial two cards just didn't they just appeared. They didn't get dealt out, and uh, that's kind of what I'm addressing here. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, we need to, though, first step back over here to the header file and paste that in, deal cards. Oh, and you know, while we're here, too, we're going to set up a couple CG recs, and these are just um, structure types that, uh, that hold, um, you can imagine the width, height, and the um, x and y location of a of a frame, and uh, you don't actually have to do the uh, that um, that star in front of them because they're not really objects. And we are going to put in here card location. Okay, that'll be one of them. CG rect start location is another, and next card location. And uh, again, we don't actually have to come down here and uh, set properties for them. Uh, it's, uh, these just kind of make it a, an easy way for us to um, do things like, let's say, top card dot frame equals card location. Okay, so that would be perfectly fine instead of having to go and write CG rec make, which we've seen many times in this uh, lesson so far. Uh, the one thing I need to double check here though uh, with my own notes is whether or not, okay, I do need to do one thing. Let's jump back up here to the top and we're gonna make start location equal top card dot frame. And I think even from right there, you can just see how easy it is to kind of store those uh, frame locations. And we'll end up using that uh, to <clears throat> animate the cards uh, moving across the screen. And, and you can probably understand just from looking at the names of these that card location would be uh, where the card's going to be going to. Start location would be where it's going to start at. Okay, And obviously that top card kind of represents the top of our deck. So that's our start location. And then uh, this other variable next card location is something that we'll use in one of our while loops to kind of figure out okay where we're going to next. And you know what? I, that might be one thing that I kind of question whether or not we need by the end of this tutorial. Uh, so anyway, all right, deal cards. Uh, we've got uh, those uh, variables set up. And I think that's probably, let's see, all we need to do in terms of uh, getting ready to go. So let's go ahead and write while. This is a short little while loop. While current card is less than or equal to two. And remember what I said before that we're starting current card at one instead of uh, zero. So this is just going to run through uh, two times because obviously the uh, you just get two cards initially in blackjack. And we are going to also, oh, I lied. We need to set up one other thing in the header file. That's going to be this current name. And this is going to be an NS, is it mutable or is it, yeah, it's mutable. NS mutable. Oh, there we go. String, current name, and this. Let's go ahead and set up our properties for. Okay. And what this will end up doing is keeping a uh, track of. Uh, well, can you imagine the currently named uh, card that's being dealt out and. You know, so it could be spade ace, for example, and then that'll be something that we go and we look up or use as a key in our dictionary. So whatever is currently being dealt out to us, that will be the current name of the file. And um, 
Well, now we should be good to go. So let's write current name equals, and this will be ns mutable string. Let's write string with format, and we are going to put in here an object type. So we do percentage. And then the at symbol, then dot png. So the percentage in the at symbol is about to get replaced with cards shuffled, object at index, and current card. Let's close that part off and then also close off that part. And we should be good to go there. So again, one more time. Uh, we're actually not starting at the very first card of the deck because that would be if this was zero, but really it's just one. But, you know, the inner workings of this, of where we're pulling cards out of an imaginary deck really doesn't matter. You could uh, you could cut the deck in half and pull a card out at 31 if you wanted. Uh, okay. Next thing to do is total dealer value equals total dealer value plus... <laughs> And then inside of here is going to be, uh, well, I got to do two brackets and then dictionary value for key. Okay. And that is going to be actually this same chunk right here. So let's go ahead and copy that, paste that on in there, and then close that off. Now, of course, notice that this has only closed off, let's see. Yeah, it's a, well, here, let's back up. That closes off this guy, all right? And then there's still one other bracket we need to close off, and then we write int value right there. And then there we go. As soon as I type that last one, notice finished off this guy right here. And if you if you got to if you kind of keep your eye on that those uh those highlighting of brackets, it's really really helpful uh coding wise. And of course, it works for parentheses and also um, these uh, curly brackets as well. Um, really helps you keep track of where you're typing things. So, uh, did we, does that make sense right here? Hopefully, it does. That uh, we're now accessing our dictionary and we want to know the value for this particular key right here. Okay, and. Uh, you know, again, that's going to give us one, two, uh, or actually, it won't give us one in this case. It could give us 11 if it was an ace, and uh, you know, the rest of the card values. So that part is done. Let's go and write over here UI image view, and let's just call this image view equals. Oh, I'm kind of debating whether or not we should rename that card image view well image view is a kind of non-assuming name right there um, you could call it new card I guess or next card in deck but uh, we'll just stick with the image view and uh, this is gonna be UI image view allocate it and let's initialize it and uh, right there we've kind of created something out of uh, nothing, you know, and, and uh, again, with a, a lot of the old or the previous sessions, we have um, been using Interface Builder to uh, kind of create placeholders for images. In this case, we're just going to, you know, use our magic wand, create it out of nothing and place it on the stage. We're, um, we're not going to place it or add it to the view uh, just yet. Um, let's do this. Let's write a few more bits of code here. If current card equals one all right so that would be the first time this iterates around then image view dot image is going to equal UI image image name and of course we've seen this line of code quite a few times in this lesson constantly changing what an image looks like and for this first card it's gonna uh, just be back dot PNG so the it's uh, that file right there which is just the back of the deck of cards and then we could write else if current card equals two we could just of course get away with else right here um, but uh, but you know if you guys were doing this or changing this for a future project and you were dealing out maybe 
three or four cards. I'll give you guys the option of at least seeing in here that uh, you might want to do it differently for per card. All right, uh, I'm just looking at my notes here. Sorry if I'm trailing off a little bit. Anyway, we've got the current name. So uh, again, this is current name. This is the full name of the card with the dot png added to it so it's going to be exactly what one of those is and that will make that card look like that particular image okay next up card location let's deal with these guys card location equals cg rect make and let's go current card times 30 so what are we doing there that uh, that just equates to being 30, at least this first iteration of the while loop. Because current card just equals 1, so 1 times 30, that's 30. And then we're also going to do a current card times 10, so that'll be 10. And then this right here is 71 and 96 for the width and the height of uh, that card. And that's just the width and the height of these files right here. All right. Um, now, of course, keep in mind that current card isn't always going to equal one. So the next time this comes around, it's going to place the x value of card location, well, within this frame, at uh, 60. That'll be a 20, and that gives us the cards kind of descending down. You know, um, as you saw in the demo for the lesson. Uh, okay. Next card location and this is going to equal. Everything that we've just done, but I'm going to add one to this right here and right here as well. The rest stays the same. And again, like I was saying before, I by the end of this, I might decide that this is not that necessary. In fact, in my brain right now, I'm trying to figure out why <laughs> or where we use that, but it's okay. All right, uh, image view tag. This is a new thing, and this is something that um, I uh, I struggled with a little bit to um, to get all the code from, piecing it together from Google and places like that. Um, tagging a, an image is easy. You just write image view tag, and then you can put in there some arbitrary number that you want. Uh, what I had trouble with was uh, referencing uh, that uh, that number later on, and it's um it's gonna make it so that you know in a sense we kind of have like an instant variable name for these um for these cards that we're throwing out here but actually much simpler than that it's just a tag and you know if you were to go and look over here in interface builder you can throw in a tag i think back over here where is it uh i guess it's that object id right there Huh, maybe not. Oh, though here, here, I'm sorry. There it is. Tag. So that's tagged as zero right now. It doesn't have a tag. But um, again, we'll see. We'll see how that gets used a little bit. But um, for now, just go ahead and add it in. And then here's where we're going to actually add this to the uh, the view or the stage, if you want to think of it like that. Uh, self dot view add sub view and then image view. And then what I'm also going to do is write self dot view insert sub view and that's gonna be top card oops dang at index oh I'm sorry above sub view yeah I'm a little worried why uh why that didn't change color, or why this one didn't either. Let's see. That doesn't like something. Uh, let's try this one more time. Okay. Let's try it. That's weird. I must have just did. I just have something not capitalized correctly. 
maybe I did view capitalized. I'll have to go back and watch that. What happened there? But um, basically, all we're doing is just um, uh, changing the index of where top card is at. Okay, because when we deal out these cards, or actually, this doesn't the top card doesn't factor in so much um, into this equation. But later on, um, when I'm dealing out uh, new cards or, or cards that the dealer hits. Uh, I want top card to always be above uh, whatever the next card in line is. So I kind of have to set that up early on here, um, you know, so that uh, if I didn't do it here and I, you know, the next card to come out would be uh, below these first two. So uh, we could we could always go back and leave this out. You could see the kind of what I'm referring to. So anyway, that just um, reorganizes the stack. And um, also too, I mean, you, you kind of saw this just as I was hitting escape here that um, there are, let's see, let's write insert. There are quite a few other options here for um, inserting things places at index. Um, you know, I could have typed in a number there and then uh, below sub view, that's another easy way of just putting something at or above another object. Um, I guess the at index, I, I would imagine that you could um, you could maybe mess up or, or put something beyond the current index, uh, which wouldn't be good. Kind of like in Flash, if you add a child outside of the realm of uh, where the other children are at, or the max number of objects on stage. So anyway, that uh, could be dangerous, but I didn't really play with it. <laughs> so uh, not positive. All right, next thing we're going to do here is actually animate these guys. So this code should look familiar. Um, UI view. Oh, I'm kind of tempted to just copy this in. We've seen it so many times before. You know, what? I'm going to do it. The only tricky thing is uh, I made one little if statement crowbar to in here that is um, going to make it so that if the current card is the next one to come out, uh, then there's going to be an animation delay of one. So that just is going to, when it, when it plays through, it's just going to show that uh, they didn't come out together. Like if I left this out, both cards would come out at the same time. All right, because remember these while loops, they run through incredibly quickly. So there's not going to be any, you know, change in time essentially but between the two coming out or animating out and the animation duration is 0.5 so it's kind of quick and then um, let's see if there's anything else here we need to really talk about I don't think so okay so next thing we need to need to do is put in here where um, our state of where things are kind of coming and going from. So uh, that's going to be image view dot frame, and this is going to equal the start location, and then image view oops dot frame is going to equal card location, which again um, All right, finally, uh, everything else should be good. We just need to commit to this. So let's write UI view, commit animations. And after that line, I'm just going to put current card equals current card plus one. All right, let's, uh, let's see what happens. Hopefully, something good. Build it and run it. Do play blackjack and sure enough there we go that is a very good sign that things are working of course uh, we haven't unloaded it I can't uh, unload things but uh, let's run it entirely over again and just to watch it one more time make sure yep I think uh, I think it's going well so um, let's come down here and I am going to make use of another um, image view, or actually I'm going to uh, kind of uh, cast one image view as another. So let me go and back up here to our header file and I'm going to make UI image view face down card. Oops. 
In fact, let's keep these two guys together. Um, you'll notice that uh, I don't have IB Outlet in front of um, this UI image view, and that's because this is not a, a, a card that exists on the in Interface Builder. It's uh, again, it's kind of one that we are uh, creating out of nowhere, essentially. And uh, let's jump over to synthesize. Okay, and I've lost my place. There we go. So outside of um, this while loop, okay, so once this entire thing gets done, again, it's only two iterations, but uh, once everything is completed there, we're going to write face down card equals, and then you have to put in here UI image view, uh, specify that uh, it's an object, that star, and then self dot view view with tag and we know that it's been tagged with one because it's just the first card that came out and then I'm also going to write face down card dot user interaction enabled equals yes we're going to do a little bit of code that where we can click on that card but uh, the the main thing to note here is that uh, now what I want to refer back to uh, that first you know, card that we brought out of thin air, it's been tagged with uh, one, I can just write face down card and then whatever property afterwards. So face down card dot hidden or whatever it is. And um, well, I guess one thing to note too is that we didn't need to, um, we didn't need to write like face down card equals UI, UI image view alloc or whatever because that was taken care of um, just because we um, declared it in the uh, header file and into that property and synthesized thing. So it's it's kind of already good to go, whereas uh, over here, um, in these ones that we were really kind of creating dynamically, and you know, again, this, even though we just made two, we could have made 50 here. Um, we, we needed to allocate those and initialize them in that line, at least as far as I understand it. <laughs> Okay. All right. So um, I think we're actually good to go with that entire function, and which also completes kind of us uh, being done with uh, the initial setup here. So when we build it and run it, um, you can see obviously that the next thing that we need to do is enable um, the clicking of this show dealer hand, and um, which of course then leads us to possibly having the dealer hit and get more cards. All right, so uh, let's close that out. We need to uh, look at notifying the um, the main view controller here that this initial setup is done. So let's go back over here to our view controller implementation file and uh, deal with the notifications. Oh, and, and of course, just a reminder here. Why, why are we doing this NS notification center? Um, this is how we can kind of talk up the hierarchy or... or um, go and uh, send a message to a, um, a class's a parent, okay? And you'd think that would be, you know, if you're coming from a Flash background, you'd think it would be like parent dot whatever or root. Um, but here in Objective-C, they, uh, they don't want you kind of going up the chain like that. Um, you, you know, obviously we've seen many times already in the past that the view controller talks down to its subclasses, uh, you know, it sets them up, it's aware of them, uh, but uh, it doesn't work the other way around, and I've kind of, up to this point in, in this tutorial series, uh, kind of avoided um, making there be a, a necessity for that, um, because maybe in some sense it's um, it's good programming to not to not even be doing that. Um, in the game I submitted to uh, Apple, I, there was no point that I ever have to uh, go and send a, a message from a subclass up to the top class. It's not that you're not supposed to do it, I guess, but it's just that this is how you're supposed to do it. Okay, so let's go and jump back over here to this, and we write, I need my notes, there we go. We write NS Notification Center, Default Center, and then 
we're going to add an observer, and this is just applied to self. Uh, the oh, oh, what are you doing here? There's two highly different paths for going through here. Uh, we want add observer selector name and object. Okay, so the add observer is applied to self. Uh, the selector, this is going to be uh, the method that we write right down here um, that gets enacted when um, we put forth this notification or when the notification is received. So uh, this can just be, you know, any any name right now that we, we choose. Um, we do need to write selector in front of it and then um, Let's let's say, um, how about first first two dealt, and then for name, uh, this is going to be a string, and um, again, this is a, a name that we just come up with here. Um, let's say, uh, oh. We'll just say first two cards ready. All right, so they're kind of similar names. And then um, object, we just write a nil for this. So these aren't really being applied to any other object other than ourselves, I guess. So now that is uh, ready, what we need to do is actually make this call, okay, or send that uh, notification when those cards are ready to go. So that's uh, just, again, it's at the very bottom of a um, this method right here and one more time I need to remind myself of the code to do this all right so NS notification center we're gonna give this um, center name we just call it NC you'll see that all over the place on the interweb it's kind of what people call it a lot of the time and it, again it's just a, a reference to the default center and then we're gonna write NC post notification name and uh, that was what did I call it um, what was it first two cards ready I gotta check that before I run this uh, nil again the object is nil uh, let's make sure first two cards ready okay does that look right to you guys all right um, and that's actually it. That's all there is. A, well, actually, aside from um, actually setting up this function right here for a method for doing something when it gets called. So let's go ahead and handle that. We'll write void, and this will be called first to dealt. Let's go ahead and uh, declare this method back in the header file. Okay, semicolon. Jump back over to here. And all we really want to do at this point is enable button two. Okay, so button two enabled equals yes. And let's see what happens. All right, play blackjack. Again, this should stay. Oops. Dang. Oh, you know what? Uh, you know what? You know what I forgot? Um, again, I'm kind of going off book from my notes here a little bit. Uh, I forgot that this while loop, you know, occurs immediately, even though the cards animating out through here take a little bit of time. So this actually got run um, like you know as soon as this started. So that's not what I want. I want I want the cards to be dealt out, and then there to be a delay, and then you kind of release that um, other button. So it's not a big change. All we need to do really is um, we'll write in here if card equals two, we'll just add in one line that says uh, UI view set animation did stop selector and we'll create another uh, another method in here dedicated to that. Um, and again, we could get away with just calling this uh, how about first two cards uh, first two dealt mm, let's call it first two cards dealt yeah okay copy that part and then we'll just step right down here we'll write void 
first two cards dealt. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, then we'll cut this part out of here, paste that inside of there, and we do need to uh, declare this method. Okay, hopefully, th does that make sense to everybody? <laughs> that only if it's the second card do we um, set up anything to be listening out for when that animation finishes, when it does. This selector gets called. Oh, uh, you know what the problem was here? I left off that line. See, anytime something goofy happens, like, you know, it, it formatted this thing all the way out there, it's a good sign that, you, that something is not correct. Okay, I think now we should uh, be good. Let's publish it, build it, play blackjack. That's staying. Yep, there we go. So that's a good sign. Let's, let's watch it one more time. Keep your eye on this. It'll stay gray for a little bit. Play blackjack. Then when that comes out, boom, ready to go. All right, so good work, everybody. <laughs> We're fully at least halfway through, I think. All right, save that. All right, let's scoot back over here to our uh, view controller implementation file. And I want to just make it so that when the view initially loads up, uh, button2.title equals nothing at all. <clears throat> and then down here, we can change this to be uh, first two dealt. Or no, I guess it should be uh, um, play out hand, maybe. Something that prompts you to uh, do something. And what did I do wrong? That would be a colon, not a semicolon. All right, let's build this. Just check it real quick. All right, so it is empty. Play out hand. OK. Uh, when that occurs, We'll be right here. And uh, remember, this is our function to, which has already been set up, show the hand. Uh, let's go ahead and take that off, and we'll take this off for right now. And let's yet again change this to title equals sprite dealer playing. So that kind of dot, dot, dot hopefully indicates that something going on it's deciding to do something and then inside of here we are going to actually make the main game um, or the the blackjack uh, game do something here so let's go and write the blackjack and we need to come up with a, a new method and that should be how about uh, dealer might hit okay and as you can guess this method We'll do exactly that. It'll, it'll decide whether or not uh, the dealer should hit. And of course, this didn't auto fill in for me because we haven't set up inside of uh, the uh, header file here anything of that sort. So let's write void, dealer might hit. And then let's jump over here, of course. And what I'll try to do is keep all these methods in order here, which was something that I didn't do myself when I was planning this out, which kind of made it confusing. And in order, I just mean, you know, the order that things occur. You deal the cards, first two cards are dealt, dealer might hit. And let's look at what we got to do here. Um, of course, we um, we have been keeping track of the, uh, the total value, so um, we will test against that. And we'll write if total dealer value is less than or equal to 16 and then that means that the dealer needs to hit that's how it's played out in Vegas that's how we'll do it here that's why blackjack is such a fun game because the dealer they gotta hit if they're uh, sitting on 16 which gives you a good chance of having them bust so um, again we'll uh, we'll need to set up a new function inside of here we're gonna call this um, self well, self just um, refers to where we're at, and then deal new card. So that's uh, a method we'll set up momentarily. And uh, then 
we're going to do or sorry if that's not the case if um if we don't need to hit then we're going to also um set, need to set up a method for that and this one i'm going to write self and perform selector and the only reason i'm doing it this way is because i want there to be a little bit of a uh, of a delay in here and this will be selector um, reveal hidden card because remember we have one card that's uh, turned over right now and um, if the dealer decides he doesn't need to hit then uh, that's <clears throat> basically the last step all we need to do is just reveal the uh, the hidden card and again just after a delay and we'll just make this 0.5 okay so we've got uh, two methods that we need to set up here and again let's just keep moving down this way uh, first one we'll make this be void and deal new card let's copy this jump over this way let's make things look pretty huh hmm why did it do that uh, and then while we're over here let's go ahead and write void and reveal hidden card oh man what again uh, I'm not liking that things are doing that why would that be the case okay we'll find out here in a second if uh, things are a problem but um, at least we can uh, now write inside of these NS log I'll just put don't hit okay should we see if things are working at least to this uh, this point build it and run it and yeah sure enough what did I do wrong I Oh man, somebody must have been screaming at me. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> okay. All right. That you know that makes me think. Uh, did I leave it off over here too? No. Okay. Hopefully that is it. And there we go. Build and run works. Play blackjack. Put those cards out there. Play out hand. And um, I was waiting for something to happen, but of course, uh, the only thing that was going to happen was we were going to output a new uh, uh, message here, and that's a deal a new card. And sure, if you're sitting on a three right there, definitely no matter what is underneath there, you're going to need to deal another card. So uh, that is what we got to handle next right here. And we get to really make use of our top card now because... The first thing we're going to do is um, show that card, um, you know, animating out from the uh, the top of the stack and top card dot hidden. I want to make sure is set to oh geez, set to no because, well, in the order of things, eventually we are going to make that um, top card be hidden, and then I also need to make sure that its image equals. UI image, oops, image named, and back.png because, again, even though right now it is currently already showing the back image, um, we're going to change that around just a little bit. And now let's, uh, let's go ahead and do our usual animation code, and I'm just going to paste this on in here because we've seen it so many times before. Uh, I'm going to call this Anime Dealing, and I do need to set up a selector in just a moment called uh, Deal New Card Done. Uh, this is going to take 0.5 seconds. Uh, let's see, what else? That's all uh, the usual stuff. And, oh, here's where we use that next card location. All right, because um, I haven't actually uh, written the code yet for, um, for creating that new UI image view, which will hold that card, um, that's why I set it up uh, previously to have uh, the next place that the card is going to go to. Um, so this card will, you know, come from the de deck out to that point, and uh, that's uh, really actually all it does here. Let's 
So let's go and um, let's test it out as soon as we get in here this new uh, method. And again, that's deal, new card, done. And let's jump back over here to our header file just to paste that on in. Deal, new card, done. And we get to steal quite a bit of code actually that we've already written because we're pretty much doing a lot of the same stuff. So let's go ahead and grab uh, these first two lines right here. Paste them on in there. Okay, so again, current name is going to have um, the uh, the name of the next card in line that gets drawn. Of course, that's going to ultimately end up having a .png at the end of it. And then we add on uh, the total dealer value. Uh, one thing I'm going to do at this point is um, write self, then deal with aces. And let's go ahead and just put in here void deal with aces, even though we're not going to address those just right now, but um, that's kind of a, at least a placeholder and uh, we get it all set up. It's not going to give us an error if we just run it with nothing in there. But, um, the, you know, the point being is that uh, we do want to test. Um, I'll just put a little note here. Test if, uh, if ace 11 um, takes us because obviously if it does, uh, then what we want to do is uh, make it th that a is equal 1 instead of 11. Okay, and then moving onward, we again get to steal some code from dealing out the deck here. And maybe I should stop doing that. I'll just write this out. UI image view. Again, we'll just call this image view equals and this time around we'll do it a little bit differently because uh, before we just had Alec in here and then we wrote init and close it off uh, like so but we can init it with an image so init with image and for that we use that same code that we usually use for image or dot image equals so it's just image image named and the name of that is current name. Okay, two closing brackets, your semicolon, and now card location. This is going to equal CG rect make. Actually, this we could have copied out. It's just current card times 30 again, and then current card times 10, 71. 96 and I forgot to deal. These don't have to be in parentheses, but I'm kind of a stickler for that. I like them to be. You know, if you're doing equations inside of uh, between commas, I like to put a little parentheses in there. Uh, this time we will copy this out though. I'm doing the same thing I did before with the next card location. So next card location this equals uh, CG rec make and we're just gonna add one plus one okay now come back down here image view dot frame equals card location Let's go ahead and tag it. Uh, even though at this point, there's really no, we're not using that tag at all. But I'll leave it in there just in case, uh, you know, you guys find a use for it later. And then we're going to do something similar to what we did up here with uh, the face card down. So basically just uh, going back over here into the header file and creating a new uh, UI image view that will kind of, you know, uh, cast as uh, this other card that's uh, going to be the, in this case, it's going to be the next card to flip. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, we'll just uh, 
copy this little part. Let's call this one next card to flip. And one more time. Copy that, paste this. And then jump back over here to the implementation file up to the top. And let's just go ahead and put it over here. Next card to flip and back on down to, there we go. Deal new card done, all right. So next card to flip is going to equal um, image view, all right. So they are uh, one and the same, you can think of it like that. And then we are gonna make next card to flip dot hidden equal yes. All right, so what's going on with that? Why are we hiding this? Uh, that's because what I'm gonna do is make the, um, the top card uh, animate flipping from uh, you know the back view to whatever current name equals at this time. And then when that gets done, uh, I'm gonna hide it and then reveal uh, next card to flip, okay? And if that seems kind of like an unnecessary amount of work, um, there's probably a better way of doing it. And actually, we, I think we did have a nice uh, kind of concise trimmed up way of doing that here with deal with cards. But you know, the difference here is that um, kind of in the order of things, we didn't, uh, I didn't establish um, what these equaled until um, until I dealt out the card. So, you know, you can kind of go back and reverse engineer this a little bit, but this is also fine too. It's just another way of doing it. Um, all right, so we need to uh, add to view, self.view, add subview, image view, and this is the same thing we did. The last time we dealt out cards to self.view, insert subview we're going to make sure that the top card is again still above above um, the image view okay and finally actually not finally got one more thing to do but um, we're going to call another method here to actually flip the card and then Last thing I need to do is write current card equals current card plus one, or you could just write current card plus plus semicolon. All right, so let's uh, let's now go about flipping that card. And of course, if you want there to be a little bit more of a delay, you could always write self perform selector uh, with delay, all that good stuff. So it's just up to you guys. Flip card. Copy this, let's go back over here. And jump back one more time. I'm gonna copy in most of the code that we need here. Uh, let's see, we uh, have to set up a selector for when this gets done. Uh, all the rest of this is gonna look familiar, it just takes about a second to do it. Here's the fun part though. And we are gonna write UI view set animation transition. Okay, so finish, hit return there. And then you're gonna put in UI view animation transition. Okay, hit escape at this point. And you can see that you got um, some really cool options here. Uh, curl down, curl up, uh, flip from left and flip from right. Let's just go for with uh, flip, flip from left for right now. We can um, toy around with the, the curl up in a second. It doesn't really work for this, but um, it, it is, perfect for cards um, and then uh, for view we're gonna write top card and then cash is yes and to be honest I haven't actually played with them um, setting that to no. all right uh, now our two states here because again this kind of works uh, the same way that we've um, We've been doing all of our UI view animations where we usually set in a uh, beginning and ending state. In this case though, uh, what we're gonna put in is just two um, different uh, UI images uh, for, the, uh, for the top card. So uh, image named and again this, well, we don't really have to put this in because 
it already is back.png, but um, I think just so we keep a beginning and ending, and you know what, let me just put a little note, note there. Um, begin, end, okay. Um, and of course with the with this type animation transition where where it does this um, flipping from left to right it's smart enough to realize what we're trying to do here basically which is have one side be on the other and you know vice versa so uh, top card that image uh, image name current name we we've um, had that established up here so current name that'll be the next card to view and then we want UI view commit animations and I know you guys are all anxious to test this out but let's go ahead and uh, really quickly put in here flip card done and we're going to at that point write top card dot hidden equals yes all right so we're going to hide that guy and reveal which is what's underneath which is next card to flip dot hidden equals no okay and does that make sense to everybody? You know, we've we just basically had this top card as a temp card for what this ultimately is going to look like. Next card to flip, which actually maybe this is a bad name because really this never actually gets flipped. And I should put a note here, a bad far name. Next card to flip only appears to flip. All right, so let's uh, let's build it out, see what happens, and success so far. Play blackjack, do do do. Play out hands, and sure enough, there we go. It, uh, flips from the back of the card uh, to a ten. And you know, one thing we haven't really uh, done here is uh, kind of test to make sure that the card that we are pulling out of the deck actually is the one that we're viewing. So you could at any time just write. Um, NS log uh, percentage sign at and then well we could just put current name here oops not in that order though and what a, not in this order either what is going on with me today there we go you know what it is I'm constantly fighting the, the location of this microphone I, I need like a guy standing behind me with one of those boom mics okay so um, it, again this is just to test things out not a bad idea to do though if you're making a game <laughs> alright so uh, play out the hand uh, it should be a diamond uh, three of diamonds and sure enough it is uh, what we haven't done yet here though is um, make the uh, the dealer keep hitting which is surprisingly easy because all we really have to do is um, call this method one more time okay um, what you could consider doing though and maybe if there's a big red light <laughs> in your brain going off if you didn't want to have this thing kind of auto play like it does this is a point where you could uh, then re-enable the um, that button or, or call this again okay so that you come back over here and where is that um, sorry where you um, where is that now oh, there it is where you re-enable the um, that button too and then make it so that you can click again and of course when you click again you ultimately end up with the blackjack dealer might hit okay so that would let you actually play this thing out okay um, what I'm gonna do though is just have the dealer go through and um, play like he should be doing and here we go self dealer might hit okay so let's uh, let's build this one more time Well, in that case, the see he's over um, he's over seventeen, so we actually need to restart it, which might happen a couple times. Now that I think about it. Okay, play out the hand. All right, there we go. That was a good example because it did actually um, play out two 
at least two cards. He's going to keep um, playing out cards like that until uh, he goes. Well, not until he busts. If he busts, he, he, he busts. But until he's over um, 16. So that, um, that's a good sign. Things are actually moving pretty quickly. Faster than I thought. All right, so let's uh, close that. And we need, to, uh, we need to deal with those aces, don't we? So I need to look at my code for that. All right. And what we shall write here is if total dealer value is greater than or equal to 22, that means you've busted. And we can write over here. Actually, busted. And in that case, uh, we are going to uh, ba basically ask a question here, which is if the dictionary value for key, and then cards shuffled, object at index, current card, and its int value is equal to 11 then we know we have an ace on our hands okay and remind yourself if you if you're kind of lost a little bit where this actually occurs remember self deal with aces so it's occurred right after we've added um, to the total value and it's occurred right after we have kind of picked out a a new card here okay and that card is whatever object is at this index current card okay so it could be an ace um, or it could not be but what we're testing is if the if the value for that key equals 11 all right then we know that it is an ace so let's go ahead and just write in here um, ns log and then we'll write current card is an ace and then we want to make the total dealer value equal itself at minus 10. It's not minus 11 because the ace has to equal something. It's going to equal 1 in this case. And again, this all happens only if it's detected that you have um, busted out. All right, so here is...
Oh, I'm looking right at it. We uh, need to do something with this um, revealing the hidden card because ultimately, no matter what happens at the end of this, you're going to end up um, not hitting. Even if you go bust, um, this uh, ends up getting called. And again, we get to reuse a decent amount of code because we're going to flip that final card. And let's just paste this on in here. Um, I'll do call this reveal. First card, and we don't actually need an animation did stop selector right there. Um, we, oh, I forgot to actually show you guys what the curl up does. Well, we could do that in just a second too, but um, everything else here stays the exact same. Uh, for view though, this is going to be our face down card. Remember, we set that up uh, a while back, and then let's go ahead and put in here. Oops face down card. Uh, this too will end up equaling uh, whatever the uh, current name is right here, but we, we actually we need to change that first. I, I shouldn't say it. Of course equals that. Um, because remember this happens at the very end and at the very end current name is equaling whatever the last card was. So we're just going to change that around. We'll, we'll say current name equals and let's just put in here NS mutable string, string with format, and then just dot png after that part. Card shuffled, object at index one, because remember that's current card originally was one that was our first card that we dealt out and that um, should do it um, at the at the very end of this what we'll end up doing is uh, sending a notification um, to the uh, view controller that uh, that uh, the dealer has totally get done playing and then to unlock basically everything again but uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and test it out uh, from here and see what happens so play blackjack Play out the hand, flip that card, and there we go. That uh, first card did get flipped, and uh, let's see, we are sitting on 17. So that uh, made sense not to uh, hit anymore. Let's go ahead and do it one more time just to see. Hopefully we get one that you don't flip it all on, or that you don't hit it all. Let's see, well, hit again. Okay, 21. All right, well, we'll <clears throat> have plenty of time to play that. But uh, let's go and set up a, another NS notification. And you know what? Let's just look for NS notification. We can just copy these same two lines and we'll just change what uh, that equals. The, uh, the, uh, the actual notification. In this case, uh, let's just change it to dealer done playing. And then back over here in our view controller in the view did load statement. We're gonna copy this line. Let's paste it down. I'm running out of space, aren't I? Um, this will be dealer done playing. And let's make this selector be called done playing. All right, let's come down here. And aside from uh, re-enabling and retitling uh, our button one, we uh, will also make the, uh, the text or the title for button to uh, say bust or uh, what the uh, the value of those uh, two cards is or uh, all the cards is so let's go first and say button one dot enabled equals yes and let's also make button one dot title equal Okay, now, if, oh, you know what, let's 
<clears throat> before we get too deep into this, let's just go ahead and test that to make sure um, everything is working so far. Play out hand, flip, flip, and flip. Okay, so that did go to, uh, to uh, play again. Good sign. What was the value here? 11? Oh, busted. All right. We win. Or we lose. I, I'm not sure who we're playing as here in this hypothetical game. Are we the dealer? Okay, so uh, if uh, the blackjack dot, remember that's our class, dot total dealer value, and ooh, that's a good question. Why is that not showing up? Oh, I know why. I did need to actually um, um, set that as a property. So let's see, where is our dealer value? Total dealer value. There it is. Okay. What we need to do is not just declare that guy, but also come down here and make it a property. Do that up top. Uh, just non atomic, you don't retain these guys. And then write int total dealer value. Let's double click this just to copy it okay now if we flip back over here and if I write uh, the blackjack dot total dealer value yep sure enough it fills it back in and if it is greater than 21 or I could have also said greater than and equal to 22, then we know it's a bust. So we can write over here n s string. Uh, we'll call this dealer value text equals n s string. Oh, allocate. We need to go back and, and not forget about some of the memory stuff from before. Uh, init with format, and this format will be like so. Let's do a percentage sign, and then I, because this is going to be an integer, not an object. Dealer busts, and then the blackjack dot total dealer value. So we'll just uh, put whatever the value he busted at was, and then write dealer busts, and then that, of course, actually doesn't do anything really that point now it's doing something okay and then uh, we can release that so dealer value text release it get rid of that guy we're done using it because button 2 retains it at that point and then let's go ahead and just uh, put an else statement in here else and I'll just go ahead and copy out this whole thing again, paste that on in there. Um, otherwise, we'll write dealer has. Oh, let's write dealer stands. It sounds cooler. Uh, but the rest of that stays the same. And now um, let's see what happens. You know what I was doing? I was just comparing what the, uh, remember we start at one for the current card, so I wanted to see what the uh, the value of that was gonna be. So anyway, yeah, the dealer looks like he's busting at uh, 24 there. Do we need to count those cards up? 13 plus 11, that sounds like 24. Play again, what happens here? Well, we keep putting cards on stage. <laughs> uh, we need to uh, unload that, uh, that view and um, kind of, well, play over again don't we which uh, means there's not really that much left to um, teach so let's go back over here to the view controller I'm sorry actually just the header file here and for the um, play blackjack uh, IV action we're just gonna put an if statement in here that says uh, let's see I put it right here if the blackjack dot view all right so if this view class does not equal 
nil, then that means that this guy exists and he is on stage. All right. So let's just put a little note for ourselves right here that um, we're going to remove the view, removing view. Okay. And then we're going to write the blackjack dot view equals nil. <clears throat> and it's kind of questionable, um, at least in my mind, whether or not you need to do that. Um, it seems to work without it and with it just fine. Uh, I guess the main thing that we're doing here is just writing the blackjack dot view remove from super view and then that um, tosses out uh, the uh, the the previous view and if I'm right let's see I think that's all we have to do at that point so again this doesn't get called if it um, if it doesn't exist so hopefully that makes sense alright so let's build it and let's see now play blackjack Throw some cards out there, play out that hand. I'm feeling good about this one. Seeing the king. Oh, yeah. Dealer stands at 20. Play again. All right, those cards are gone. And let's play out this hand. If another king showed up, I'd be very nervous. <laughs> um, you can see, though, too, we are re refreshing the um, the order of everything. It's, it's giving us new ones. So play out hand. Oh, got an ace. And let's see what we end up with here. Well, this is interesting. Wow, man, that's probably the most cards I've seen um, come out there. So let's see, this was 11, all right, so if that had been 11, yep, that would have busted, so that um, that makes sense that we just keep dealing over here, and wow, pretty cool. I'm feeling good for blackjack, here, what, what do you think? Oh, no, close though, close. Okay, I'm ready to gamble. Okay, since uh, I feel like we're doing all right on time, uh, let's go and set up one little variable in here. It'll be a Boolean, so you guys can um, easily switch between having this uh, autoplay uh, like it does now or where you have to manually uh, hit another card. So to do that, I'll just write bool autoplay. And we are in our uh, main view controller here, so we don't... Uh, we don't really need to set this up as a property, I don't think. We'll just say in the beginning, view did load and autoplay. Let's have it um, set to no. Okay. And then if it is set to no, um, when you, let's see, go to the, not that this one, but when. Okay, yeah, after the first two cards are dealt, we'll say if. Oh, jeez. If autoplay equals yes. Let's change this to. Um, not about let dealer decide. Okay. Otherwise. All right. Hit me. And then we want to be sure that um, button two stays. Oh, wait. Yeah, in both these cases, uh, button two um, gets in enabled. So that's all right. But if autoplay is set to no over here we want it to um, we want to keep this enabled so let's just um, right if autoplay equals yes we just do everything as it was before else well, I'll just copy everything right, button one enabled equals no, but button two, that stays enabled. And then we'll say player hitting. And um, we need to go into the blackjack uh, file now and uh, set up a, a Boolean class for that as well because 
uh, remember that currently inside of that file, dealer might hit occurs um, after the last card gets flipped, uh, regardless of anything that we've done in here so far. So let's do that. Uh, let's go into blackjack, and this will be bull. Um, you know what? I forgot if the um, if the bullions have stars after them. No, they don't, because they get treated just like numbers. So, but we do need to set up a. Um, a, a property declaration for this because we need to have the main view controller um, set what this is going to equal to. So this will just be non atomic and then bool autoplay. And now that that's set up, we can come back over here. So when we first load up the view, which is right here, play blackjack, we're just going to write blackjack dot autoplay that should show up equals whatever our autoplay does here. Okay. So those two will be tied together with that. And then come down here. Let's look for dealer might hit okay well that was close I want the other one there it is so when the flip card gets done if if auto play equals yes and it's just gonna go and rerun that dealer might hit function uh, otherwise, it's just going to stand and do nothing, so we don't need to uh, do anything at that point. I think, um, again, I'm kind of, I'm winging it here, people. <laughs> Let's try and uh, see what happens here at this point. Well, I failed at something or other. Let's see what, what we failed at here. Um, oh, right. Huh. Hmm. I don't know why that happened. Let me. Oh, I know what it is. Undo. That's fine. It's just that. Remember, our class is actually called the Blackjack. Okay, let's see now. And that's uh, that's an easy one to fix. Okay. All right. Hit me. Okay. Well, that was unexciting because it all it was just flip that other card. Uh, you know, this, the, the, the rules are still coming into play here where if, um, if that function dealer might hit the text that you're already over, um, what you should be, um, standing on, it's just going to reveal a card underneath. Uh, so let's see. Well, that's a low card. So this might, um, work nicely. King and, uh, it, I guess we aren't, or no, actually, I'm sorry. If I hit this now and we're over, it's going to reveal a card. If not, it'll hit me one more time. Okay. So. Makes sense. Dealer stands at uh, 19. Of course, you would, um, <clears throat> I guess, then want to change. If, if you did have this set to autoplay, I guess you're, we're, we are assuming at this point that you're not the dealer. You are yourself. And um, then you'd want to go out here and change, like, uh, let's see. Well, where else do we refer to him as the dealer? Oh, right in, right in here. Okay. So... Yeah, you could write. Oh, I don't feel like it. <laughs> this is all kind of hypothetical anyway. This should be, though. Um, let's leave this at, at hit me. So we won't change that. All right, so that stays at hit me. And then, let's see. Yeah. So it's still playing well for you let's put it that way um but you know th this could very easily go into um a, a way for you to to make a, a, a blackjack game you, with you versus the dealer where the um view controller class here um keeps track of uh, what the last 
hand was, okay, which would be either you or the dealer, and then um, you just toggle back and forth between um, autoplay or not, okay. So, um, so you could have like a, a a text field on you know one side of the screen and on the other that that maintains that score, and just you know every other round just clears it out and sets it back again. Uh, I do want to do a little bit more in the blackjack game though, and that um, is a touch event inside of here. So let's go, let's just cut down to the very bottom of the screen. Oh, and we still got to deal with releasing some of this stuff. But um, I didn't even think about it. You know, we haven't um, crashed or anything like that in <laughs> playing with this so far. So at least what we've um, set to nil and what we've uh, deallocated here hasn't caused us to crash. Um, which is a good sign because actually, again, when I was playing around with that, um, that, that caused me more crashes than anything else. But it did have to do with me releasing the same object twice and stuff like that. All right, so I'm going to write in here, uh, touches began, and uh, just it can auto fill in with the rest of that stuff. That is all fine. And we are going to set in UI touch, touch equals, and we can do touches on any object here. This will be cg point start touch location equals touch location oh wait okay just making sure to change color there touch location and view touch dot view Really, all we're getting here is just a, a CG point for the uh, start touch location. And what I'm going to do is uh, create a hit test based on that. Okay. And this is some code I hadn't actually played with um, yet up till this um, lesson. Because before we've been doing the CG rect intersects rect most of the time to um, detect a collision of some sort and I'm gonna throw in here that view with tag again just to uh, kind of re reiterate that it is possible so self dot view view with tag all right remember we tagged that card um, when it first came out so this is gonna be our first card and then we are writing inside of here hit test and then the CG point will be um, start touch location all right and then with event we just put in here the event that's um, what's going on right here this touches began so we'll close that out close this out and then let's go over here and write uh, self dealer might hit and then uh, we could also just put in here um, if um, autoplay equals no because otherwise you wouldn't want this function happening and when I think about it, this could actually wrap around this top one here. But uh, let's see if this is working. And uh, we do still have this uh, autoplay set up, don't we? So autoplay set to no. And all right, I'm going to try to click right here. And sure enough, it uh, does give me another card. Okay, and dealer stands at 17. Okay, yeah, that's, um, that's working pretty well. I guess something else you could put in here, too, would be if... Um, if autoplay equals no and um, total dealer value is um, less than or equal to 16. If you are still abiding by the, you know, the smart rules of uh, playing the game. And um, one, actually the only thing I should comment about this is this seems to work just fine, except uh, there is, kind of some strangeness with where exactly on the stage um, that occurs. So like, I'm gonna click, dun, 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 dun. okay, all right, that makes sense. Okay, we're at the edge of that card, but over here as well um, activates that. So one of the things you could do is you could write star touch location dot X, e, oops equals 
start touch location dot x. Um, let's see, are we adding to this? Plus twenty. Oh, whoops. Okay, so clicking right here now is no longer doing it. How about here? How about here? How about here? All right, now it looks like looks like I shouldn't have been. Um, Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> the reason it didn't work that time is because we were already over uh, 17. Hopefully we've got, okay. So that still is clickable over there. Let's just play it one more time. I'm gonna kind of work back this way and see. Okay, so we have, looks like we have moved that start location, but in the wrong direction. Well, anyway, the point is that this is possible, but, um, you know, I think if um, with the, if you're playing on screen and not with a mouse, uh, that probably people aren't even going to really notice. It, it becomes, I mean, it's still a pretty wide area that you can um, touch those cards right there. But that's um, this is obviously a way that um, you can detect uh, some sort of touch with uh, those um, image views that again kind of they get added to the stage at runtime. So there's not really a um, not really a uh, interface builder object for them, which makes it a little bit easier to do set up these things like the buttons. Um, one thing as well is uh, we, let's see, I don't think I ever set any sort of user interaction up for these. Oh, I did. I'm sorry. All right. So uh, when I, I, I believe by default when these, uh, when these cards come out, user interaction enabled is set to no. And one way you can test that actually is, let's do this. Let's just NS log the second card that comes out. And this is an object. Actually, let's let's send a log statement for both of these guys. So view with tag one and then view with tag two play blackjack and let's look at these guys so let's see opaque no tag equals one animations equals I don't let's see I don't remember that ever showing up before huh usually uh, I thought we got a um, oh here it is user interaction equals no so I don't know why the first one did tell us that uh, but the second one is definitely telling us that, which makes sense because, um, as I was saying before, I think by default they are set to no. Uh, tag equals two, and of course you guys, you know, you might want to take some interest in what some of this other stuff uh, is that gets spit out here. Um, obviously, it's giving us the location there as well, that were the frame. So let's uh comment these guys back out there is a another way you could handle the uh, ambiguous touching of this some of these objects here is to let's step outside of this statement and let's write in here another way to detect touch with uh, view with tag and uh, that would be to set up a CG rect uh, based on that start touch location and then do what we have been doing in past tutorials which is that CG rect intersect rect so we can just go um, CG rect uh, let's call this uh, how about touch frame and this will equal CG rect make so we're gonna make a square here using start touch location dot X and you can imagine then start touch location dot Y and then for the width and the height, uh, this could be whatever you want, but um, let's just go with something kind of tiny, so it's not a huge box. That's what we're testing the intersections with. So just 30 and 30, and then again, here's that our favorite statement. Let me go ahead and uh, put in the two parentheses there and say, if CG rect, ugh, rect intersects rect, okay. In that case, we are testing if touch frame collides with, and that's going to be this part right here, 
and then you got to put dot frame after it. Okay, and uh, if so, we'll just write here ns log. Um, Uh, let's go and we'll copy that and then I'll comment out what we had back here. And I'm, my guess is that this is actually probably a little bit more reliable, so we'll just leave this one as the in the final copy. Okay, play blackjack and let's try to hit kind of close around here 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 sure enough deal new card that's a good sign oh yeah well, let's try it again okay click one more time touch the card why did uh, <clears throat> why did it not flip us over there Oh, I see, right, the total, yeah. We should take that out of there. Okay, so that's, uh, that's again, another cool way you can kind of play around with that. And it was not something I thought of uh, until this lesson either. Okay, so let's scoot back over to the main view controller. I am gonna stop being lazy and write, no, sorry. If auto play. <laughs> Actually, I am still being lazy. There's a lot of repeated code here. In all these cases, every one of these ends with a dealer value. Or no, I'm sorry, it ends with, um, what does it end with? I thought they all done playing. No, I guess that's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, one of the issues is we don't need to do this whole allocate in each one of these. Of course, it only ever happens in one case, but, um, you know, we could have set up this dealer value text up here outside of these if statements but that's all right all right so at least um there is a the end of the game says player bust instead of player stand so again we are getting a little bit closer to having a two-person blackjack game okay hit me again wow i haven't gone over yet player stands at 20 huh cool uh, in keeping with that in mind, let's go back over here to the blackjack implementation file. And if autoplay is set to false or off, when we deal out those first two cards, uh, we should <clears throat> set it so that, uh, that this current name card is showing instead of just the back uh, .png. So inside of here, we shall write current card equals one. And if autoplay equals yes, so that's the dealer. Else this. And I'll just put a little note here. All right, let's test it out. Build and run. Play. Hit me. And um, I guess if you know if we are going to carry this out to what it looks like I'm doing here, which is great, creating a player version and a dealer version, there should be a stand button here, which it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, but obviously, to that last hit hit me button. Um, if it does detect that it's over 16, it's just going to flip that card. So that's another thing that we would um, want to make sure that we get rid of for an uh, 
autoplay version, or really probably it that that boolean should be titled something more like dealer play. Uh, let's see. Let's go back and where is our reveal hidden card? Okay, we can write in here if autoplay equals yes. Now let's try it. Right, so we're we're sitting on something over uh, 17 right now, and it is uh, keeping us from uh, going over that. So that that's where we should throw in like a stand button, or you know, if it is blackjack, of course you could just keep hitting be an idiot <laughs> but um let's go and uh we will uh, let's do this what did we just turn off here we should i knew something didn't seem right about that we should still leave in there the um dealer done playing or, or this statement done playing and if we do want to come up with a or create a uh, another button as a stand one, we should go back over here to our main uh, playing cards view controller, and we could get rid of this fixed space. Let's add in. Oh, we can just copy one of these guys, can't we? Sure can. Now we should fix the width of that though. Let's make this more like 140. These do have um oh as you're seeing right here a width property, but that's um you can set that by writing um, button one dot width and then just put a number in there. So, all right, we've got a stay button. We should make this enabled. Just turn that off by default. And actually, let's go ahead and just take that off entirely. Don't forget too, you can throw images in here as well. Okay, so now back over here, we should button three let's go ahead and set up an IV action for that Okay, now we can switch back over here to Interface Builder yet again, and holding down Control, go to button three, click on button three, and let's find its selector. Oh, turn that off. Relink it up to Files Owner, Stay, and now what we'll do is write. If autoplay equals no, actually, let's do that not in there, but uh, in this uh, method right here. So when you click play blackjack, we'll say if autoplay equals no, then button three dot title equals stay and then copy this yet again and then uh, once
one or after the first two cards are dealt right here we can also uh, say if uh, well we've already got that in place so we just need to write button three dot enabled equals yes and let's test it at this point just to see what's going on with it play blackjack okay hit me now let's uh well let's hit it again All right. ace sure so stay is ready and it's enabled at that point it's pretty obvious so let's cut back over here and if you are going to stay then really the only thing we need to do is run our method for um, the re results so that is where are those guys I've lost track here it is the um, done playing so just write that well let's let's change this around a little bit uh, so if you're done playing then button three dot enabled equals no and let's go ahead and make button three dot title just wipe out the title basically all right so stay just needs to call self done playing and now let's see what happens play blackjack two cards are out let's click stay uh, player stands at 17 play again and I guess actually too when we um, we we'll hit stay like that we should make sure that um, we make this uh, unenabled which is easy let's just go back over here and also too how I think about it well no let me build this again play blackjack okay yeah that doesn't become enabled until these first two cards are dealt out over here but let's make it so that we don't even see that stay text in there until those first two cards come out so we'll write button three stay and where did I have that before right Okay, now we should be good. Sorry if I'm jumping around a little bit, but uh, well, I just didn't plan on doing any of this. I thought we were going to spend forever on the first part of this. So, okay, um, now uh, hit me and stay are both enabled, and let's just go ahead and hit stay. Uh, player stands at 12. Uh, play again, clear it on out, and let's see, hit me. Okay, well, again, it's hit me is still following those rules of uh it's not going to let you bust if you're over um, 18 but that's a uh, another easy thing to uh, change in the code stay so player stands at 15 play again the uh the play again button needs to let's see needs to wipe out of what button to and button three have for their titles. I guess it doesn't need to, but. And also, needs to unenable it. Okay. All right, play blackjack. Those should appear. Let's stay. And let's play again. Hmm. Why didn't that uh, clear those guys out? Okay, I had to uh, pause the video for a second and see why that was doing uh, that. I, I, I thought <laughs> it was as simple as just uh, <laughs> maybe needing to put a space in there. Actually, it turns out I really should not have done um, this line right here, this... Uh, setting it to nil. I'm not positive why, but I can show you uh, what was going on. I noticed when I was publishing that I was getting 
um, to uh, well, I was getting these uh, log statements right here run twice, okay. And since that's a lot of um, text to look at, let me just comment it out and put something a little bit simpler in here, like at the very top of my view did load statement, just something that says uh, view loaded. And check this out. So I'm going to come back over here, I'm going to run it again. All right, play blackjack. Uh, that gets loaded up. Oh, looks like I'm still somewhere in there outputting uh, that uh, that dictionary. Let me just see where that is. Oh, there it is. Actually, it's the card shuffled. Okay, so let's try this one more time. Play blackjack. Uh, we see the view loaded once. All right, so I'm going to hit stay and then play again. And what is this about? View loaded twice. Well, it turns out that for some reason, setting this to nil actually ended up causing it to load again. So I'm going to take that out of there. And let's just go with re remove from super view and play blackjack. Okay, view loaded once. Click stay play again and removing the view and view loaded so that is uh, something that I'm gonna have to really look into uh, for later it wasn't really causing any problems though I guess we had some other cards in there or maybe nil um, was setting it to nil was was uh, somehow reloading it in, in itself and then I guess that's probably more likely because we certainly weren't seeing two sets of cards somehow underneath each other but um, that is pretty odd, huh? Okay, so things do seem to be good in our world, though. And let's close that out. Oh, and by the way, that did actually fix what I was, um, the issue that I was having there, where, so you hit stay and then play again, and then these guys are blanked out until that NS notification comes up. All right, are you guys ready for what can only be described as the big finish? One last little if statement we should put in here, which means if autoplay equals yes, then autoplay equals no, else autoplay equals yes. What the heck is that going to do? Well, build it and let's see, play blackjack. All right, in this case, let the dealer plays. He stands at 17, play again. This time around, it's you that gets to decide, so hit me, baby. All right, 21, we're gonna stay at that, and play again. This time, the dealer is playing. So it's just switching back and forth, back and forth. And again, the only thing that you um, could change would be that, uh, see right now, when you hit, hit me, it's gonna well, that's correct. It should have done that for busting, but um, it, it it there still is that code in there that kind of auto decides whether or not you should stay at um, anything over seventeen. And that's such an easy fix. You know, uh, let's just go ahead and throw it in real quick. Uh, blackjack implementation file. So this is uh, this function uh, or this method a dealer might hit. Of course, that's. Um, not really the best method name now that we've added the player option in here, but uh, what we will do is write up here if autoplay equals yes, and then everything else here stays the same. Let's just uh, pretty things up a little bit. Okay, so that uh, gets run identical. As it was before, let's just put here uh, player playing. And that's no. Uh, if the total dealer value, uh, again, with that uh, <laughs> terminology, this should uh, be uh, if it's uh, less than or equal to 20, because, you know, you're not going to, we're not going to have the code deal you out another card if you're already over um, 21 but um, that will come into play and then for this remember this reveal hidden card that doesn't really occur for the player 
it's down here um, what we could do then is just say uh, just clipboard this and then come back up here and write else um, we can just say uh, well, we don't need to put the note there. You're just done at that point. So now if we were to build this, play blackjack. Okay, dealer busts. Play again. Hopefully I get some low cards. Well, it doesn't really matter because um, I can hit any time now. So there we go. If I go over and I try to hit again, it just tells me I busted out already. Let's try it one more time. So three, eight. And instead of saying let dealer decide, I should uh, rephrase that to be let dealer play and hit me. Oh, here's a good example. So I'm at 20 right now, and I can hit again, be an idiot. So, see. All right. So let's go back over here. Call that make deal to play, and I think that um, we're done with uh, this lesson. So again, I did see just a second ago one of those cases where the uh, the ace could have been set back to being a one again, and, and uh, the person went to bust it over. So that is definitely going to be y'all's homework if you want to take that challenge or. If you're just confident that the uh, Apple Store has enough blackjack games, it doesn't need another one made by you. Um, so, did I just see what I thought I saw there? Oh yeah, the dealer's first card isn't coming out right. Oh, you know what's probably happening is when the view gets loaded up here, um, it, it, it it's doing its whole view did load thing, uh, which has in it, of course, a lot of code in here that um, kind of keeps on going, shuffling the deck, doing its whole thing, and then it's only after all that occurs that this um, autoplay gets set. So um, if you know, if we just put in here a slight little delay. Um, with our shuffle deck function, that would probably work fine. Let's go back over here and we'll, we'll try it out. So if we wrote uh, self perform selector with object after delay, let's try that. That's nil, and then let's just delay it. 0.5. Might even be able to delay it much less than that, but let's at least give this a shot and see what happens. Play blackjack. Yep, sure enough, that uh, that works fine. It seems to at least. Stay. Let's see if it goes back. Yep, sure enough, face down. So that's. Uh, that's looking good. And with that, I am calling it quits for session five. Uh, you guys don't have much homework. <laughs> if you want to fix that ace issue, go for it. Uh, otherwise, stay tuned for our big finish next week with um, session six. And I need to start planning that lesson as soon as I upload this one. All right, see you guys.